Tremec have played an important role in the community for many years. Once owned by the German population, then turned over to the Polish population, bars have been a central part of life for all people. Historian and executive director of the Hamtramck Historical Museum, Greg Kowalski, tells us a little bit about Hamtramck's bars and their histories. The bars have played a very important role in the history of Hamtramck, going all the way back, at least to the village days in 1900. And uh, those in that time, mainly Hamtramck was farmland and uh, a few stores and several bars uh, on Joseph Campo, and they were mainly operated by the uh, German immigrants who arrived here and before the Poles got here. And uh, they weren't just, uh, they weren't just places for recreation, even back then. They became the centers of power, really. That's where all the people who really ran the village at that time, and, and they keep in mind there were only a few hundred people then. But that's when they, that's where they really met, and they did things, and they organized things, and et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and when we turned into a city, uh, in 1922, the bars, you know, we kept that, uh, even though they switched to being more Polish than German, they still became, to see, it remained as a, very much a center of power. As Greg Kowalski has described, bars are major hotspots and were once known to be centers of power. One specific owner who has noticed this is Tom Jankowski, current manager of Whiskey in the Jar and former mayor of Hamtramck. Tom Jankowski describes bars as being social settings where many different things took place. There were bars that hosted fraternal club meetings, bars for veterans only, and even bars that allowed you to come in and shop for a box of eggs alongside your beer. Tom Jankowski also describes bars as being politics heavy. I mean, I remember when I first started voting, I had to go to a, uh, a private club that was a bar, and that's where the voting booths were in the back of the place and so we walked through the back door and voted and walked up front and we had some beers these were sites of political power they were also spaces for workers to gather before and after work as the dodge brothers factory grew more polish immigrants moved into the city which is what began the change from the german ownership of bars to the polish ownership of bars but the dodge main factory became one of the biggest in the world and the others were fairly, you know, a number of them were fairly large too. So you had a lot of really uh, working class people moving into Hamtramck in a very short period of time. There were a lot of social pressures, especially like during depression when uh, everybody was losing their jobs. So, uh, and you know, uh, poles and beer go back a long, long time before there even was a Hamtramck. So they were accustomed to drinking. And uh, that's why when prohibition started, uh, it, was, it was virtually ignored in Hamtramck. Nobody was going to bother with that. They thought it was insane. So uh, the drinking continued. As mentioned by Mr. Kowalski, bars saw little change during Prohibition. Instead, they turned into soda shops and sold liquor underground. So bars, uh, when Prohibition came along in Michigan in 1917, the, that had very little impact on the bars directly, I know, other than, you know, they quit selling uh, liquor in the open, but they, you know, they became uh, soda shops, which was a bunch of baloney. They just went on the ground and sold, produced liquor and sold liquor there. And we don't even know how many uh, illegal bars there were in Hamtramck, uh, because we really don't even know how many legal bars there were in Hamtramck after Prohibition. But they were all over the place. Now, bars in Hamtramck are still very, very popular. Mr. Kowalski categorizes bars into three different categories. The first being a shot and beer bar, the second a family bar, where you would go and get a quiet drink, the third is a music bar, or a bar that is uh, hard rock and focused around music. The whiskey in a jar would be kind of closer to the uh, family style of bar, where you just go get a quiet drink. Although they have, I think they have a pool table, and uh, I don't know if they have music there anymore, though. But um, but it was it's interesting to note its location because it's right in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, right next to houses, right off the alley over there. So it was mixed in a lot. Most of the bars really were mixed into the neighborhood. Some of them were right in the middle of a street. Most of them, though, were at the corner there. Ski in the jar being in the middle of a neighborhood, Mr. Jankowski says his bar is very community oriented. Uh, my bar is definitely community based. Probably most of them. You know, some of the venues now that are 
opening or more of uh, music oriented. So, you know, it becomes more of a destination stop rather than just a community place. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a few that are still just, you know, anchors in the neighborhood. Now, while the bar isn't music oriented, it does contain a jukebox, which is actually the reason behind the name Whiskey in the Jar. So when I first purchased the place, it was called Mr. Joe's Bar, um, but it needed a name change. That's what the original name was, Mr. Joe's from the beginning. Um, so it was open probably a month, month and a half, and trying to figure out a name. And, you know, I had partners, and we were kind of not agreeing on a name. And mm -hmm. um, the one day the company came in to service the pool table, jukebox, you know, video games. And I, I asked the guy, what's the number one song on the jukebox? And he looked it up, and he said, Whiskey in the Jar. Mr. Jankowski says his bar sees a variety of different customers now. But politics is not widely discussed. Lean's liberal, not like sports bar or anything. Uh, just people come out and have some beers and talk to each other. But politics isn't really talked about much anymore. They just don't want to get involved in it at all. You know? Since purchasing whiskey in the jar in 2000, its owner says he has seen a change in the bar structure of Hamtramck, with less than half of the bars that used to be in the city existing today. In 2000, there was probably, uh, I could say, 50 to 55 bars, what we call Class C liquor licenses, which is a license to serve liquor by the glass. Um, today, I, uh, there's less than half of that, probably low 20s. So, you know, the biggest changes I've seen is a lot of places have closed and uh, you know, never reopened. Mr. Jankowski goes on to say that many of the bars that were once here are no longer standing. Only four bars from the 2000s remain, including Whiskey in the Jar. Some of Mr. Jankowski's favorite memories come from his early days of owning Whiskey in the Jar. You know, when we first opened, um... There, there was a, a wave of young people that were moving in, moved to, and were moving into Hamtramck uh, from the outer suburbs. Um, kind of the, I don't know what generation you call them, but I call them the grunge generation, you know, back in the Pearl Jam days. So, uh, yeah, and um, they were kind of, you know, weren't comfortable with, a lot of the bars because uh, they felt a little different um, and didn't want to hang out with the old timers, the rough and tumble and traffic boys, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I was approached by a couple of people I knew, some guys, and they're like, hey, Tom, man, why don't you, uh, why don't you hire us? And uh, I got all these people from these coffee shops, they want some place to go and hang out. We'll just bring them over there. I says, okay. And, uh, it was pretty phenomenal. It was a lot of interesting people, and uh, they had a lot of fun, and uh, they looked out for each other, and it, it, it was, you know, pretty incredible. Um, I, I just always thought that was, you know, to this day, I mean, 20 years later, still friends with a lot of them. Um, you know, and, that, and our annual Portuguese Day party was also, you know, pretty phenomenal. You know, we'd you know, shut down the alleys around the bar and put up tents outside and have bands. And it was, uh, you know, it's a, quite an event. Although bars have gone under many changes, they still remain a prevalent piece of the city. Residents can come together and build a sense of community, bonding, and belonging, which can last a lifetime. <laughs>